Um, so I think I broke Kilo Juliet November. Sorry, Steve. Every time. <laughs> Yes, hello friends, welcome down to Albert Park here in Melbourne. Now those of you that follow me on Instagram would have seen I put a post up a couple of days ago just showing uh, Kilo Juliet November and saying that there was a little bit of damage that I actually got as a result of a flight I did to Bankstown recently. Now before taking a look at the damage itself, what I actually want to do is I want to show you the raw footage of what exactly happened. I'm going to take all the air traffic control communications out and just give you the audio from the camera that was mounted on the wing. Take a look at this, let me know what you think happened. Yes, now of course you can see there on that landing the nose wheel uh, it gets kicked around to one side on the first bounce on the second bounce It gets kicked around even further then it comes around hard again What's basically happened as a result of that flicking around the wheel itself the tires actually impacted the inside of the spat It's cracked it on the inside now what causes that sort of thing? Well, it comes down to a number of factors There was a strong crosswind from the right hand side as you can see here on the windsock as we're coming into final That breeze was blowing across so it's actually drifting me across from right to left on the runway Way as I'm lining up. Also, I think I probably was coming in a little bit too fast if I'm going to be honest. My instructor, Mike Walden, is probably watching this and shaking his head. He always tells me to get to the point where you can hear the stall chirp before you actually touch the gear down, wash all that energy off. I don't think I took enough energy off, so I was carrying some extra speed. Plus, I hit the mains down a bit harder than normal, which pivoted the nose down. There's a number of factors, but at the end of the day, it's the pilot that puts the aircraft down on the runway. So, for whatever reason, whatever's happened, yeah, we've got a bit of damage on Kilo Junior in November that we need to fix. So that's where I'm off to today, heading down to Blue Demon Aviation at Moorabbin Airport to see what they can do. They've said that it's fixable, it doesn't actually need a whole new component. Um, but at the end of the day, look, here's a really important point before we get into the fix. I had the footage, they saw the plane, they weren't sure what actually caused it. At the end of the day, if you're the pilot in command and you return an aircraft with damage on it, just be honest. Don't worry about what people will say, don't worry about people thinking that you might be a bad pilot, whatever. That's not going to be the case. The safety of whoever's using the aircraft after you is paramount. If you bring an aircraft back and it's not in its original state, tell someone. Let's jump in the car then, head down to Moorabbin Airport and yeah, let's um, Let's see what I've done to poor Kilo Juliet in November. Oh, bloody pilots. God. Paul here from Blue Demon Aviation, who you would have seen when we changed the four blade prop, the prop on KJN. Exactly, yeah. So Paul's done a lot of work on KJN in the past, but he's here today obviously on an unscheduled matter of business <laughs> because he's going to help repair the damage that we obviously saw earlier on in the video. Is this fixable? Do we need to this, completely change oh, the nose? that it's more, it's a, it's a minor damage. So what are things happened as it's cocked over and you put it down through the chimney then lift it up and then cock to the side mm. the um, tires rolled over yeah and the sidewalls contacted the spat someone here's done the same thing so i could still repair this this is beyond economical repair so yeah for, for an owner it's cheaper for them to buy a spat because i'm going to put too much time and effort into fixing this it's yeah. cheaper to buy a new one but your one's quite easily repairable this one's been previously repaired and then he's broken it again so after one repair, I'm more inclined to say, let's just get another one. And this is another one that's been repaired in spare time. So that was to the extent of, say, that white spat. And we've just gone through and done a composite repair. The only thing you'll notice different about this, it is made of carbon fibre. They look cool and they're really strong, but they tend to cut sidewalls of tyres, so you end up with puncture. I should mention, we're in, we're in a special room today. We're not actually out in the main area of the workshop. Why, why are we here? Um, we've, we've, we're in this room because we're really sort of governed by environmental conditions when it comes to composites. For serious composites, we're doing an epoxy system, so if it's too humid, mm. too cold, too hot, we can't perform the repair and guarantee that it reaches its full strength. Resin's hygroscopic, mm. so it will absorb moisture, so if it's really humid, we'll in, absorb a lot of moisture into our repair and we'll get voids etc. So on the footage that um, we were looking at before obviously you can see the nose wheel car you can go see it going one way going the other what's stopping it kind of swinging all the way around? Okay so it's a car string nose wheel so it relies on the friction between a teflon washer and what we call the nose steering spindle on the spindle has a stop and on the fork has a stop so that mm. stops your turn otherwise it would go right right the way around and through the prop. Yeah all right have you got an example? I've got an example right. let's go see one of those. 
So we've got a castering nose wheel. That's just steering, so it's done through differential braking. So this has got a Teflon washer and a spindle, and then it's got a series of washers under the bottom that provide the tension for the steering, which we set during maintenance. It can only go so far. If it wasn't there, it'd continue around, and then you've got the prop arc, and then you've got a whole lot of problems. We're at the stage now where um, we've had a look at the damage. Paul's assessed what needs to be done. He's been through the documentation, obviously, and the manual, so he's, he's aware of what needs to be done. But what is, so what's the next step? Because you're going to start getting hands on now with the fairing. Okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get really dusty to begin with. Excellent. It's fiberglass. We'll turn our little workbench on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the damage. So we're taking out the damage. So how, how do you know how far to cut and what to take out? Well, I'll take all the paint off first. We'll do, a, we'll do the repair from the inside because then it's, you don't end up with a big lump on the side of the spat. So I'll do it from the inside. We'll do our repairs on the inside and we'll just body fill and paint the outside. Do I need any protective gear? Yeah, I've got some. I haven't got the red overalls. We've got pink or blue oh, this time. Pink or blue. <laughs> I think this is more a peachy salmon pink <laughs> than a bright pink that I was expecting. I quite like this, thank you. See your crack where you've broken the spat? Uh, yeah, yeah. So see how it's so packed to about there? Yep. That's where the damage stops. This bit I've snapped off, I'll just yeah. put a backing on here. And then I'll just build the, the new bit at the bottom of the Spaniard. Now, that, so we finished the sanding and now the, um, I suppose the fairing itself is ready for fixing. So now we're going to be using, uh, you can see how badly I'm explaining this. Paul's already told me so this, but it's still it's great. You, you, you go, this we've is removed, much better. We've removed the damage. We're happy with how it looks. We've tapered it, we've sanded it, it's free of contamination, it's clean. Now we're going to mix up some resin. So we're going to mix up the resin, then we're going to carry out the repair. See, that's exactly what I was trying to say, just in a pilot's way. And you're wearing that mask. You know, this is a bit breaking bad. We'll put holes in the bottom. I'm just working all the air bubbles out of it because an air bubble equals a void. So you haven't got the strength there. So I'm just slowly working out the air bubbles. And also, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, you can also see the air bubble is trapped. Yeah, I can see that. Now you can stipple it out of the glass before you, with a paintbrush, where you just dab on the surface of the fiberglass. Yep. Or you can just work it out with the peel ply. I prefer to work it out with the peel ply, but I mean, I'd assume it's fresh, personal preference. Yeah, see how you're getting air bubbles there? Yeah, I can see, see that one, so you just really push it out. Are you really good at putting on screen protectors for iPhones? I am actually. You must be. <laughs> Looking at that, working all those bubbles out, I'm terrible at that. And now, so where are we going now, Paul? So now oh, that's done. Gonna... Chuck it in the oven. So now that the all those plies and those layers have gone on, it's literally time to bake it. Put the spat in there. Yep. And then we'll just turn it on the power point. So it's got a temperature controller like your normal oven. It's in Celsius. And there is a ramp, what they call a ramp up. So I won't just throw it into a hot oven. Yep. Because stuff expands, it contracts and moves, and if there's any air bubbles right. in they'll grow. So I'll just it's 20 degrees. Yeah. It gives me a limit of how fast per minute I can ramp it up. So I'll just monitor this till I reach it reaches the curing temperature. So roughly how long will it have to be inside here? To reach its full in order for the composite look, it will dry at air temperature. Mm. It will go hard. But for it to reach its full strength, it needs to be cured for eight hours at yeah. 180 to 210 degrees Celsius. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So it's in there, and then once it comes out, is it ready to go back on yep. at that point? Yep, and don't break it again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, brilliant. Thank you, Paul. I feel really bad. She looks really naked without her. She looks naked without the wheel. Stevens has brought me down here to the hangar just so we can have a look at the uh, the pantless nose gear. The remains of the aeroplane. The re <laughs> it's not that bad. Well, this is what it looks like then with the um, fairing actually taken off. It's still perfectly fine as well without it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's. I was going to ask you that actually. So you can KJ and still flies now, even though it hasn't got that front yeah. fairing on now. Yeah. In accordance with the fly manual, you can fly the airplane without mains and no spats. Next time we fly KJ and on this channel, hopefully 
that will be back on if that's back on in the next couple of days. But thank you once again for fixing the broken plane, Stephen. That's right. Till right. next time. Till next time. <laughs> Till next time.